New influencer scams. New new Jay Aubrey video. Jobbery video. About influencer scams. <sighs> Hello guys scams. and gals. Me Mudahar and I am angry. Why are all watching? of these fucking influencers doing this, dude? Oh, I want to bring attention to your a scheme that has been growing in popularity amongst YouTubers. Yeah, he's uh... Jobbery is a, is a Hasanabi head. Wonderful, brilliant essayist on YouTube. The hottest, newest coin of 2021 is Dink Coin. Save the kids coin. And they'll Dink token coin. family nipple token. I know I haven't posted in a while. Guys, this has gone so beyond social media it. drama at this point. Like, there's legal implications for these guys. Okay, Aren't you guys supposed to be playing okay. video games? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that it, what, that's the crazy. Yeah. How did, how, did you, this, how did this whole thing start? How did I'm it end sweating. up here? Oh, God, I'm so sorry. This shirt is like paper thin. It's like wax paper. I'm so sorry. I only know how to react to politics, man. This is gonna be tough for me. This is me, straight up. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. We're all being kicked out. I'm sorry. No way. Yeah, bro. Um, like everyone but me, right? No, T what? <laughs> if there's one thing YouTubers love, it's delivering consistently quality content to their adoringly dedicated audiences. Oh wait, no, it's money. At this point, the term influencer may as well just be synonymous with forcing thousands of fans to wait outside in the California heat as you charge them $70 for condoms. Right, Tana? <laughs> I can't. I mean, after locking a fake wedding with Jake Paul behind a $50 paywall, who else to trust with your finances than a stand-up gal like Tana Mongoose? And I looked at my teacher and I go, you're a bitch! And she was like, oh, and all the parents were like, oh. <laughs> Which is why it makes total sense for Tana to promote only the most lucrative and promising cryptocurrencies on the market, Titscoin. A coin she created herself with the aim of putting money into your pocket. Or something along those lines. <laughs> My ownership in tits coin just bought me this beautiful Rolls Royce. Get yours now. <laughs> Let's see what the coin is worth oh, now, shall we? Oh, oh, hey, that's a big drop. Tits so unless you coins. bought in here and sold off exactly here, something tells me you aren't exactly pushing a Rolls Royce right now. But since early 2021, it seems just about every influencer and celebrity in the book has developed a keen sense for the crypto. Was that the, was that, what's her name from, uh, uh, the fucking shit. Market. <laughs> Nipple is an ERC20 token on the Ethereum blockchain, including deflationary and frictionless yield. Carol Baskin, sorry. Yield mechanics. Begging the question of what does someone like Kim Kardashian, who once wore mirrored sunglasses to a poker game, know about the complicated world of trading Ethereum Max? Well, that's something I want to figure out today. But just in case you're new to any of this, I think it's best if we start from the beginning. Do you want me to turn the volume down a little bit? So you can hear me talk? Now to a wild ride on Wall Street that seems to have just come right out of the blue this morning. With all this wanting by Wall Street, it's making me sick. Several large hedge funds were severely wounded in the process. There's nothing normal about what you're seeing when it comes to this stock right now. Crazy. They call this insane 700% this month. A GameStop is worth over 10 billion dollars at last count. Talents here, we don't know where they're doing, but I'm not, I actually think, uh, Herb, that they're smarter than we think. After hemorrhaging sales for the past decade and having its corpse pissed on by a literal plague, the declining game retailer GameStop took an unexpected turn when its stock value skyrocketed to a whopping record of $487 per share in January of 2021. After being dead in the water for the past however many years, no analyst could have ever seen this coming. So why did it happen? Now, I'm no expert when it comes to stocks or money in general for that matter. I just dropped 124 bucks on Kanye merch for an album that isn't even out yet. But I do know that when a company is destined to fail, there will be those who try and make a little money on the way out. Which Sorry, is exactly what happened Sorry. with GameStop. Power 
powerful right. Wall Street hedge funds filled with former frat guys were essentially betting on GameStop's inevitable failure. They were shorting it. To put it in the most simple terms possible, the more money the company lost, the more money went into the pockets of conniving Wall Street investors. It happens constantly, only this time. A third party happened to intervene. Reddit. A new generation of investors using their phones. Fueled by the Wall Street Bets group on oh, Reddit. Say, it's been a wake up call, uh, in their words. Um, the investment subreddit Wall Street Bets quickly picked up on just how much shorting was going on. Not just with GameStop, but AMC Theaters and Blackberry, to name a few more. That's when they realized just how much chaos they could cause if they collectively chose to pump these failing companies higher in value. So the 3 million Redditor army quickly began buying up as many shares as possible, causing the markets to implode, turning a decent profit, and fucking over greedy hedge funds in the process. It's beautiful, really. I can't even be mad. Suddenly, Discord moderators from all over the country were able to spoil their hopefully of-age kittens with illustrious earnings pocketed from pumping stocks like Nokia. But seeing so many elite Wall Street crooks crying on national television made it all worth it. I got a great idea. Ban social networks to talk about about buying short stocks. Uh, right, that's, that's their net <laughs> Isn't that censorship? Is this Fox News? Oh, right. If you logged on to anything that day, you'd see regular investors, kids even, actually getting rich off stocks at the expense of powerful entities. And the sooner you got on board, the bigger return you made. I have a kid who bought a house. He had he made $50,000 and bought a house. Leaving everyone in the nearby vicinity on the hunt for the next big meme stock to get behind. And I have a feeling you know what they landed on. <laughs> Well, now the Doge Fathers. Uh, okay, Doge Fathers. <laughs> Created as a joke in 2013, the cryptocurrency Dogecoin surged nearly 800% after Tesla CEO Elon King of the Neckbeards Musk tweeted this image on January 28th, 2021. Maybe out of spite for Bitcoin or just to have some market manipulation fun, Elon quickly became the face of the Doge movement. As evident by the replies to any of his tweets. By the way, I never invested in any of this shit. I never invested in any of it. I was, I never, I'm not, I don't, I don't know how this shit works. I don't understand it. I don't trust it. I don't invest in any of it. What? Well, that's, that's the point. If the people that created it don't know how it works, why would I put my money in it? I, I just don't put my money. I don't, you know what I invest in? Real estate. That's what I invest in. Well, they've already, I've already told him I was a landlord. Wait, if anyone believes in Elon after he clowned everyone on Doge, like you're a sucker. <laughs> that guy completely took your money. Oh yeah. He a landlord that provides free housing. Huh? How about that? How about that for a plot twist? fucking owned you. Believe it or not, I actually owned a tiny bit of Doge myself at the very beginning of the year until selling it before the peak of 7 cents, which later rose to a grand 70 cents in May. So I can't, if I had held my original investment, I- There's I'd no ad. Okay. Be rich, but it, it's cool. It's fine. I'm, I'm not mad at all. Like, why, why, why do you ask? But then again, if the value of an entire currency can be leveled by- How do you know there's an ad coming? Did you pre-watch this? Oh, okay. Single tweet from Grimes' husband. You probably shouldn't be pouring your life savings into it. All that to say that- In order to avoid controversy, he's pre-watched this 30 seconds ahead in, the, in that room to make sure that there's no blood in a video about crypto. <laughs> oh, nudity, nudity. It was about, I don't know. Admittedly, putting money into Dogecoin or any other crypto that does not contain actual <laughs> utility is more or less just, just to make sure there's no bare, bare chested women in a video about um, cryptocurrency. I mean, it's true. I guess, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. 
just gambling. Which isn't bad on its own, but being aware of this reality is crucial so you don't make any super brash decisions that hurt you financially. The spontaneous burst of success from a coin like Doge was a rare event, a fluke that left early investors rich and gave everyone else a case of FOMO, the fear of missing out in the future. Could lightning really strike twice? What if something like Doge happens again? That is exactly the question many celebrities and influencers This is how you do it, folks. You take that money and you fold it in half and you put it in your pocket. That's how you make money, okay? Don't, don't buy into this shit. I've been quick to take advantage. Such a dad thing to say. That's my dad, that's my dad told me. It's early. If it is a Ponzi, get in on the ground floor. But I'll tell you what isn't a scam. The incredibly generous deal you can get with the Atlas VPN. Oh. Ever get annoyed at the hundreds of shows and movies that are locked out of your country's Netflix? I oh, know shit, I this is the ad. I gotta skip this. Hold on. Let me get... Gives you a heads up to change your password. <laughs> Hold on, let me get out of there. Hold on, let me try to figure out where it ends. Now to the... We British go. guy. Move Hello. over Dogecoin, which featured the face of a Shiba Inu dog. Now there's Catcoin, which was thought up by no one other than this Carol is not Baskin. It's not a currency. We call it a currency. That's right. The owner of Big Cat <laughs> Carol Rescue, who found fame through Netflix's Tiger King, <laughs> is getting into the crypto craze. So remember that painfully unlikable character from Tiger King? Yes. No, the other one. No, oh. the other one. The other one. There we go. Carol Baskin, who absolutely did not and would never dream of killing her husband, has taken a rather surprising plunge into the crypto space with her own spin on Dogecoin, aptly dubbed Catcoin. Or Scatcoin, as I keep reading it. Not the most genius marketing, but that's to be expected considering everything about this project seems about as rushed and unplanned as possible. I'm sure it's all just a coincidence that Catcoin hit the market only three days before Doge was expected to reach record highs thanks to Elon's SNL performance. Big Cat Rescue says it will also launch non-fungible tokens in the next two weeks. With I, I still don't know what the fuck fungible, I don't know what an NFT is. I've had a million people tell me what it means. I still don't understand it. I don't get it future plans including a big cat metaverse for virtual visits with the cats with virtual visits can you not already watch live streams of tigers online for free you know what never mind at least the nfts sound promising you know hopefully we get to see more of this oddly sexual furry art style in the future <laughs> gonna make me act up but what about although maybe i'll put one out one day because maybe it's lucrative i don't know you know you never know right i want to keep my all my options open right <laughs> You know, you never know. Any of this makes it a scam. Maybe Carol actually has what? hopes of her own cat no. coin going to the moon no. one day. No. Obviously not today, as it's been hitting record lows since May 19th. Make sure you know that you could lose money. Yeah, no fucking kidding. But as stated in an interview with CNN, Carol is still deeply concerned about the volume of US dollars that are being printed and distributed with nothing to back them up. Which is a lot of words for a former Dancing with the Stars contestant. But it's still actually pretty sound reasoning on its face. With every crypto transaction being sent and received through the extremely secure digital ledger, some say blockchain technology may actually reimagine the way we use money. The need for banks may one day be a thing of the past, but I can promise you this, the future of finance will hardly be paved by a project like Scatcoin. Tokens like Bitcoin and Ethereum are always going to reign supreme thanks to their high volume and name recognition. Not to mention the slew of real life international projects they've already been attached to for years. So I wouldn't exactly be banking on some random fringe token spontaneously. Wait, is this guy saying you should bank on, not bank on the fringe tokens, but bank on the other token that is just bigger and more reputable or has more name recognition, but we also don't understand why that is a thing. Is that what he's saying? So bank on the other ones that we don't get because they're more popular. Is that what he's saying? conjured okay. up by a hacked TV star. Oh, because Carol Baskin's coin is, uh, who, who the fuck created Bitcoin? Like, I, 
Anyway. of Kanye West's wife, or ex-wife, or new wife, I have no idea anymore. But I can't say I see anything wrong with Kim K sharing her abundant crypto wisdom with a following of 248 million? Only a slight responsibility there, you think? But at least she's out here promoting one of the more mainstream tokens, Ethereum Max. What the fuck is Ethereum Max? Okay, so it's literally just a blatant scam. <laughs> Not to be confused with the more popular coin, Ethereum. Ethereum Max is only named that so people get confused and think the two are somehow associated when they aren't. In fact, according to Coindesk, Ethereum Max requires very little technical skill to make, which is alarming enough on its own, but you really think Kim Kardashian's following of millennial white women know that? They're just gonna take her endorsement at face value because she's Kim Kardashian. A literal billionaire whose word will naturally be placed on a pedestal just by pay hey, Kim is an don't even I just I, I will not take this dragging of Kim Kardashian's name on this broadcast I'm just gonna say that right now okay all right proxy of being Kim Kardashian. This is not financial advice. <laughs> Look, okay, online, nothing ever good comes after those words. <laughs> I wonder who exactly these friends of hers are and how much they must be paying her for this story post. Because the way this thing reads, there's no way there wasn't a fat wad of cash behind it. In reality, it's difficult for crypto experts to say how a project like Ethereum Max even works, both on account of how new it is and how the Emacs website only contains intentionally vague buzzwords under the community perks tab. See, they don't show you the whole graph either, right? Like, this looks fine until you go to the all time section and, ah, oh, hey, it's worthless. And it's not like they're the most transparent about the developers or the team behind this project either. Another glaring red flag to take note of. Because with less faces attached to the project, the less chance of scrutiny and potential blowback down the line. The only faces I can see are those of household names like Kim K and Floyd Mayweather, who already scammed about a million people into paying for a fake boxing match with the guy from Law and Order. Legalized bank robbery. Yeah, <laughs> can't argue there. These are people being paid anywhere from six to seven figures per sponsorship this based is the worst. on previous reports. This is the worst part of this entire thing, is that these people are so fucking wealthy that they don't need to do it, okay? They literally are just like pure greed and pure neglect and malice. For their fucking fan bases, which is precisely what I was saying in the uh, in the video or in the audio that Jay Aubrey used in the beginning of the fucking uh, video here. Reports. I mean, Floyd didn't exactly disclose he was being paid for wearing an Emacs shirt, but it wouldn't be the first. What he said. Hey, Cash App. This time he's left out that key detail now, would it? When he was fined over $600,000 by the SEC in 2018 for promoting some random token called Centro, which shockingly turned out to be a fraud. The creator of that little number got locked up for eight years after advertising fake partnerships with Visa and MasterCard. So just keep that in mind when hearing about certain crypto ventures from dudes who spent their entire careers getting socked in the head. Chances aren't many celebrities wouldn't be doing this type of promo if there wasn't something substantial in it for them. A pretty grim prospect when you consider who exactly these people are affecting. Their fans, who are not multi-billionaires. Loyal supporters are being duped into thinking their investment is going- Hey, they could be, that's all I'm saying to make them rich, when really all they're doing is maxing out their losses. <laughs> See what I did? The Ethereum max, maxing out. Never. Openly playing with someone's livelihood is just sick, and to be at that level of financial freedom and still have the gall to treat your audience like piggy banks is just grotesque, with some of them being more obvious than others. Alright, moon boys, listen. Now you guys are in the crypto space, it's the wolf here. What would a good pump and dump scheme be without a literal actual convicted criminal at the forefront? <laughs> Jordan Belfort, a former Wall Street goon who continues to write off the popularity of his Scorsese film in a last ditch effort to cling onto any sense of remaining relevance he can. You have an oral contract with your management, the Fordham Company. Is that an attempt to hide your income? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I think you can air what you want here out of this interview, it's done. In addition to befriending other non-fraudsters, he's also got a TikTok. If you hate capitalism that much, then why don't you move to Venezuela, but take a piece of fucking bread with you, because you have to wait in line one week to get one. 
Wow, badass, dude. You ripped families apart in the 90s and continue to fuck over your annoying fans on Twitter via half-baked crypto schemes? The American dream in action. Literally, the very real plot of the movie consisted of Jordan and his team of gargoyles manipulating regular, naive people into buying niche penny stocks they knew full well would underperform and in turn make them rich. He is a genuine con man and has gone to prison for his practices. Yet people will still listen to him on random fucking coins like Moon Boys? Moon Boys? I, what, what even is that, dude? What's his view about the Moon Boys? Now is the time. It's just annoying to see otherwise extremely privileged and well-off celebrities so shamelessly jeopardizing the financial states of their fans if it means making a quick buck. But it doesn't just end with giant names like Kim Kardashian. Remember what I was saying earlier about YouTubers? Chilling in my Lambo, stacking crypto! <laughs> Oh. How the fuck did we get here? After not posting for an entire year, the notorious doyen heartthrob and blackface enthusiast Bart Baker made his sudden return to Instagram with a jarring music video promotion of the French crypto coin Polydoge. Not to be confused with Dogecoin that everyone and their grandma oh. knows about today. See, just like Ethereum Max, the name Polydoge is derived from a far more successful crypto endeavor. In a sinister attempt to trick the average buyer into thinking this must somehow be be related to Dogecoin. It isn't, obviously. And the only thing more disgusting than piggybacking off the success of a coin with a way bigger market cap is duping your remaining handful of fans into thinking it'll grow by a thousand times. And let me tell you, since this video was posted, it hasn't. <laughs> But it's not the price alone that determines whether or not a coin is a scam. A big factor includes its volume, or the sum total of actual trades taking place. The volume of a coin is typically a good indicator of how much general interest a project has. The higher the volume, the easier it is to trade and make money. For example, the volume of Bitcoin is around 30 billion, with Ethereum at 23 billion. Even Doge is still sitting around 1 billion today. So to put it simply, a coin with especially low volume is basically worthless regardless of the actual token price. And when we look at Polydoge, a project with barely any information on it whatsoever, it's no surprise the volume is so staggeringly low compared to the- Gu uh, Guys, I don't- I'm very limited into my react abilities, okay? This is outside of my realm of expertise over my pay grade. Oh, way over my pay grade, okay? I studied up and prepared for talks of vaccination mandates today that's what i was prepared for okay not i i need another 20 minutes to study up on crypto billions i just mentioned <laughs> hardly anyone cares about this coin because nobody knows about it which is why developers and scammers need influencers Maybe not Bart Baker specifically, since i can't prove he's been paid to promote polydoge but i literally had one argument yeah it's because it's the only argument that you need it be, it's not that complicated. It's not that complicated. One argument, terror explosion. Okay. You know what? Take a seat for a second. How do you X this shit out? How do you X this shit out? Okay, there we go. It's at least very clear to see the volume rise on the same day Bart had a popular tweet blasting Elon and promoting the coin in the same breath. The <laughs> influx in volume is what particularly gives scammers yeah, that's what Joe Biden's doing chance to dump their coins and make a profit. Again, I have no way of proving Bart's involvement in the project or his real intentions here. But to me, it's still pretty questionable any way you look at it, as Polydoge has been like hitting Joe record Biden. lows in recent months. It's certainly not uncommon for giant names to promote potential Ponzi schemes for the sake of obtaining the best. So my question is this, how do you, on one breath, you say that like Joe Biden can barely stand up straight uh, and, and like, uh, he needs to go to bed at seven o'clock to wake up for the early bird special and like is on a breathing machine. Uh, but then on the other hand, he's like some super powerful authoritarian dictator. I don't, which one is it? You know, I'm sorry. We'll stun lock here, but I'm, I'm just curious. Okay, you put 40,000 bucks into Safe Moon. You made a big production out of it. I think Safe Moon is down a little bit since then. But uh, where are you on Safe Moon now? I mean, are you, are you ever gonna sell? <laughs> Was that a euphemism? I'm down 50%, Stuart. Not a little bit. I'm down 50%. No, I'm never going to sell. This man has diamond hands, and I said I was doing it. 
for the long term. So it's been a little rocky road, but that's the nature of the beast when you get involved with these type coins. Safe Moon will eventually land on the moon, and I'll be there to throw a yacht party when it does. But it's down. Yeah, and it stayed down. <laughs> but the good news is, if you were to ask this guy if he thinks it could be a scam, he wouldn't even lie to you. The answer is Safe Moon. Safe Moon is now in the Dave Portnoy business and vice versa. Why? I don't know fucking why. It could be a Ponzi scheme. I like the word moon because that's where I want to go. I don't think that all these celebrities who make headlines what about the crypto market are really helping. You know, Elon Musk sends the thing up and down all over the place. You've done that too. You've made headlines. You are a celebrity and you've made some headlines, but you've whipsawed a lot of investors. I don't think you celebrities saying this kind of thing are doing that much good for the market in the long run. When I made my safe moon, it jumped and then it comes back down. I agree with you that it's not a super long term impact unless you stick with it over the long term. But it turns out Safe Moon may not be as safe as you think. See, like many of the tokens we have and will continue to discuss today, <laughs> Safe Moon was developed with one purpose. Scampi, I mean, gamble, gamble. Safe Moon adds nothing to the world. It isn't meant to. Putting $100 into it is like buying a $100 lottery ticket. Sure, it might be fun and the low price may draw you in, but that's where it really gets you. The so-called potential it has to make you rich. All right, so let's say you invest only like $30, right? So you take that $30 times the current value of this coin right now, and you get about roughly 19 million coins. What? So let's say this thing goes up to about just one cent. Your potential on almost two hundred thousand dollars now what this TikTok man doesn't tell you is that in order for safe moon to reach one penny that would make the market cap of safe moon six trillion dollars triple the entire crypto market so it sounds like super simple uh would break crypto so it's not going anywhere good to know but it's not like any of that matters to dave porn toy over here he's promoting it on fox news solely so he can move the markets like elon i mean he fucking said it i think musk is manipulating the market and i think you're doing exactly the same thing i wish i could do it to the degree that elon does it i wish i had his power there's no doubt he's manipulating it and i wish i could to the degree he does um, can we just take some time to acknowledge that $40,000 is only worth about 0.03% of Dave Portnoy's entire net worth? So if he loses that, he'll just make it back in a day. I mean, the dude hasn't exactly been coy about losing 700 k on similar ventures in the past. It's almost like the guy who brought us the worst podcast in the world isn't the wealth of knowledge his chud fans think he is. You, you know them. goddamn well you gave him chlamydia and you are gonna go up to him and be like, I cannot believe believe you gave me the clap, you dirty motherfucker. How, How could you do this to me? Why would you do this to me? Wow, And then beautiful. they don't know what to do because if you, I mean, girl, uh, girls, it works. If you follow any rat pages on TikTok, Twitter, or Instagram, you may know a little bit about- I've never had chlamydia. Aiden Ross, the 20 year old Twitch streamer whose content mostly consists of enthusiastic screaming into a microphone. Despite posting since approximately 2014, Aiden's Twitch saw a rapid growth in early 2020 when he befriended fellow streamer and son of LeBron James, Bronny. By betting thousands of dollars on games of NBA 2K, Aiden quickly grabbed the attention of huge audiences and built his platforms up to a total of 1.85 million subscribers on YouTube. 2.1 million followers on Instagram, and 4.8 million on Twitch, where he routinely plays video games, freestyles along popular rappers, and chats with fellow content creators. I'm famous somehow and I'm famous. Yo, you're in trouble. Why? Oh shit. That crypto shit. Was that in real time? I've always, I've seen this video. Was it in real time? Oh shit, it was <laughs> On May 26th of 2021, Aiden Ross became amongst many prevalent online figures to promote a cryptocurrency scam to his fans. 
It's one by the name of MILF Token. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's very funny, it's very funny. See, as long as you give it a little quirky name, you can get away with promoting anything, right? It's after being paid what was confirmed to be a total of $200,000 for a single sponsorship, many began to question the intentions behind that of a coin like MILF. <laughs> or, you know, we could just ask Aiden himself what he thinks. Chat, by the way, that MILF Token shit I did a while back, I already told you guys, don't buy that shit. I got paid a bag to do that shit. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. How many of you guys actually bought it? <laughs> That's right. Just mere weeks after going in front of an audience of 75,000 teenage hype beasts, Aiden clarified he had been paid a fat bag for the promo, and that he hoped none of his fans had actually bought into it. A complete 180 on the sentiment we heard from him during the actual promo. But uh, yeah, let me uh, let me go ahead and buy let me buy a milf real quick. I want to buy one. Buy some milf. Here we go. Uh, I'm gonna buy some milf, and I'm gonna basically. I thought he was gay. Buy some MILF and it's MILF and basically uh what does it mean insufficient sons? Alright, yeah, so how do I buy the MILF? Okay, so basically go to the website, click uh buy on Uniswap. Uh-huh. No, no, click buy on Uniswap on yeah, the website. Yeah, 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 yeah. Click. Yeah. Okay, select now USDC, select a token, click USDC. Uh, After a seemingly brain-dead admission of guilt, it didn't take long for bigger streamers to smell blood in the water. Creators Ethan Klein and Hassan Piker were quick to level critique against Aiden. And soon enough- Dude, look at the picture he uses of you. What's that? Move over. What? Move over, I'm gonna eat. Holy shit, what the fuck did you cook? Bro, that's like, an, that's like three chickens. You know how many- Chicken boobs, they had to remove it. Why are you fucking wearing shoes in my house, dude? Oh, because well, they match my fit. Oh my Can I go pee now? God. Am I yeah, off? You can go pee. You can Am I off duty? Look at everybody. Write about this on Twitter. Hassan Piker exploiting the two would confront the 20 year old in a bizarre, confusing. Wait, where is the. Where is the fucking. Blood in the water. Creator is Ethan back? Klein and yeah, Hassan. There. <laughs> You son of a bitch! You know he got that from OK Buddy. It should be illegal for YouTubers to be Hasanabi heads or, or be aware of uh, community memes, okay? There, I said it. If you're in here right now, dude, not Jay Aubrey, but just like anyone else, if you're like a fucking essayist and you're in here like, haha, this is pretty funny, stop using this photo! <laughs> My girlfriend administers vaccines to people and she says all the hogs are wearing American flag pins, 1776 shirts, and sobbing as they get their vaccines because their work told them to get it. Imagine thinking you'd be a revolutionary but cry over a safe vaccine. Also, George Washington inoculated his troops too, so, you know, that... I'm sure his fucking... His revolutionaries were crying back then too, like, Man, George, don't make me! Don't make me do this vaccine, George! I will not stop using the photo. Yeah, that's someone's first time seeing me. They're gonna be like, what the fuck? Who is this Hasanabi guy? Piker were quick to level critique against Aiden. And soon enough, the two would confront the 20 year old in a bizarre, confusing mess of an interrogation. I don't know, bro. Like, I just no. see like, you just don't like me. I don't know. <laughs> right, okay, we can talk about that. I'm a human being, like I made mistakes, but, but I wanted to show you this one clip. Can I flip camera? Or, yeah, you can, okay. I'm on a phone. Bear with me. Sorry, oh. guys. Oh, this so, is fucking... This is tech, Dan. Take note of this shit. I know. I'm really boy. sorry. Just watch this clip right here. This is my promo. Go I ahead. just want to say real quick, Go they ahead. wish that they never did this with me. Let me just show you why. Uh, yo. All right, chat. Uh, I got... This argument is so funny because it's like... It's like, dude, I tried to rob the bank, but guess what? Like, it was unsuccessful. So, you know, like, come on. Are you gonna, are you gonna really send me to jail for this or what? You know? I mean, I tried. Oh no! Discord's in frame. Two more things to say about milk. So, see, like, if I was a brand and I paid somebody to do that, I just did it horribly. I didn't know what I was doing, bro. Like, 
but a poorly done scam doesn't exactly negate it being a scam. If people had lost money, it would have been a pump and dump, but because the price stayed about the same, it wasn't? I don't know, it's just insane to me. You pay attention to every fucking statistic at every minute of the day. You True. saw Pathetic. that after I did that shit, it went down. So listen, it was not a scam of pump and dump nothing. Right? As some have been quick to point out, the defining trait of a scam cryptocurrency isn't the price alone, but the prospect of act- No. The most important part of a cryptocurrency scheme that works successfully is a top of the hour ad break that has nothing to do with the cryptocurrency scheme. That's right. It's true. I'm sorry. It's true. Because at the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break. And if you'd like to no longer see the ads, then all you need to do is subscribe. You can do it for $5. Or sorry, it's four now because it's fucking uh, September. Or you can do it for free with a Twitch Prime. Or you can use an ad block or a VPN. Yeah, Austin didn't run ad breaks. It's called Top of the Hour Coin. Thank you, Sexy Panda Bear, for the 50 gifted subs. <laughs> Yo, bitch, I thought you were about to give insightful info. That's the whole point. I never That's do. That's right. I didn't run ads. I didn't run ads because I forgot. I would have ran the ads. I just pumped and dumped this ad break on your ass, dude. That's what I did. Yeah. I, uh, I forgot, honestly, yeah. if Hassan would have cut me a percentage of that ad break, I probably would have ran several of them. Oh, yeah. He would have been. He's I ruthless. I would have ran the shit out. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I would have ran the shit out of him. At least I'm honest. Here's the woman ad break now, folks. actually finding a buyer which as we established earlier is where hiring these giant influencers comes into the Sit picture down, it's pretty obvious uh, to gonna, see gonna, at this I'm point like, that although the price didn't oh, fluctuate dipping? much the volume it definitely did on the very day aiden promoted it meaning that regardless of how bad he considers the advertisement to be he still allowed milf scammers to dump all of their coins onto his unsuspecting fan base make a huge profit himself and then still plead innocent because because the price stayed the same. Now, I can't tell if Aiden is stupid, manipulative, or just a little bit of both. Actually, yeah, probably is that last one. Yeah, and I know, and I, and I already know you, you, you probably hate me based off of like what happened with the whole MILF token and stuff, but it wasn't a pump and dump. I wanted to show you this clip uh, from my live stream. Let me just show you this clip. I don't clip. hate you, to, 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 uh, just to clarify. No, you said I'm a piece of shit. But the very least Miss he could Kim. do is show a sliver of accountability after it's been proven that his followers got scammed, rather than pleading naivete, <laughs> saying it couldn't possibly be a scam, and just moving on with his normal streams alongside Soldier Boy. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. But I don't want this to seem like just a shit on Aiden Ross party. Plenty of other creators are just as responsible for shilling this joke joke of a coin to the respective audiences too. Other creators with questionable moral compasses. You guys know I've been investing in a lot of cryptocurrency lately and one coin recently that came up, I actually saw from Jake Paul as well. It's called MILF. It's insane guys. I 25 x my investment, which is just nuts. But how did people They need twink coin is all I'm saying. I'm sorry, dude. This is such scumbag shit, dude. Quick coin needs to be there. It's so fucking scummy. Like, you're not poor. You're not fucking starving. You don't have, like, gambling dead. And you're just fucking stealing from your adoring fan base, dude. It makes no fucking sense. Like, you're just a scumbag. People like the Paul brothers or Rice Scum even gained such a reputation in the first place. Well, I tell you, but... Like, just get a normal ad, dude. Like, literally, just, like, get a fucking normal brand to like advertise okay you know chill out on some fucking raid shadow legends i gotta go get drunk enough to deal with the second part of this raid video shadow so legends. in the meantime i'll leave it up to my brilliantly eloquent side piece take it away babe hey hey it's me the right opinion thank you jawbreak for introducing me wherever in this video because the ho didn't specify, but fortunately he did give me a brief on what I'm to talk about. So without further ado, let's talk about Rice Gum and the Paul Brothers, my favorite set of people and the spirit of scamming audiences. Let's do the most right, obvious 
My right will be here in 20 Rise minutes. Gavin Jake Paul. Oh, accomplished yeah. kings of the YouTube rap yeah. game and part time charging. content creators on top of that. On the cusp of 2019, they both posted content about what are known as mystery boxes. Basically, a box you don't actually know the content of when you purchase it. It's a bit of a raffle. This website was known as Mystery Brand, using branding that bears a somewhat uncanny resemblance to the Supreme logo. Another company known for their high regard of the consumer. Basically, we partnered with this brand uh, called Mystery Brand. Net. So basically we partnered with them because they're like the best and they have like the dopest site and they have all of the dopest products and stuff like that. Like on their site you could literally win like a Rolls Roy Royce. Royce. You can win a bunch of Supreme stuff, you can win iPhones, iPads, all sorts of good. Are you and we partnered me? with them I'm because in. today I am going to spend thousands of dollars on mystery boxes and see what I get. In Jake Paul's well, video, not. he very vocally states that they are partnering with the site. Maybe too vocally, but brownie points for that much. On the other hand, Rice Gum mentions it so fleetingly in a sentence that I didn't even notice the first time before acting all curious and enticed by this enigmatic platform. I kind of wanted to switch it up a little bit, do something different. So me and Mystery Brand actually teamed up if you don't know what it is. Basically, it's a site that has a ton of these like random mystery boxes. Like right here, he has like a Yeezy and Supreme and like technology, like smartphone one. I don't know. I guess you buy a mystery box, you open it and you get like one random either dope item or bad item. It's like a mystery. It's a surprise, right? Oh, and I believe like the top area is like the live winner. Like at this moment in time, people or like, you know, getting random stuff. Like some dude just want an Apple Lightning to USB. Yo, wow. What is this strange site? It's a mystery box site, but it's like got all these theme boxes. Whoa, that's crazy. You should definitely try opening some yourself to see what's inside them. That would be mad. Be something, man. Yo, I'm gonna try again, guys. Yo, I'm gonna just keep going at it. Why not? Oh! actually a good shoe yo i don't know if you guys actually like shoes but this is a good shoe the reason why i'm actually super surprised is because like it's like a two thousand dollar shoe in both the videos our intrepid creators receive fluctuating amounts of luck but in each one yo that's crazy dude i can't believe we got that busted ass goddamn adidas the problem is they were scamming it's gambling regardless and it's fucking dog shit regardless especially when your audience is so fucking young regardless I'm so fucking Sharia when it comes to gambling, dude. It's not even funny. Like, I, I, I just am. Like, straight up. I'm, call me the fucking Taliban when it comes to gambling, okay? I mean, seriously, it's so fucked. Especially with, like, young babies that are like, Oh my God, I'm gonna go steal my mommy's credit card and go gamba. John! Thank you for the 10 tier 1 gift subs. No, I'm serious, dude. Inshallah, brothers, one day we will eliminate gambling altogether. I mean, that's not even true. I fucking gamble from time to time. It just sucks. I'm yeah. not a good gambler. I went to Vegas. I put 50 bucks on a table, and I was like, can I get some change? And they said no, and I just lost 50 bucks. I don't even know if they rolled the dice. That was oh. the last time I gambled. It's just like... It's just... It's... I don't know. I mean, I'm dog shit at gambling. It's not like I'm good at gambling. Don't get me wrong. I'm fucking terrible at it, but it's just probably a good thing because I'm really addictive. But yeah, there's just something about it that just makes me real fucking real Sharia, you know? It's the moment I, the moment I, the moment I fucking see Gamba ads going out to kids, is I turn into a psycho, dude. How do you like that? Dude, I love it. You, 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 you ever show the video? <laughs> Where do you just look That's a double dick suck. That's it. See, it's because he took the vaccine. While folks. he's literally fucking uh, listening to YMCA. He took the vaccine. That's why. Before the vaccine, he wasn't doing that. Anyway. Have you seen the video of him versus Obama doing the uh, the announcement of like killing Baghdadi no. versus. You haven't seen that? Obama versus Trump. 
No. Baghdadi versus Bin Laden. When they got... Er, have you seen that? Have you guys seen that? I don't know, but we'll just keep it's going. It's good. It's they so seem good. to win more than they lose. We run yeah, uh, Donald Trump, our glorious president, is going to be commentating on a Evander Holyfield fight tomorrow. Scum scoring multiple high-end trainers, AirPods, and a $10,000 handbag from his custom $250 box. He's got the handbag. Yo, that's a $10,000 handbag. I'm about to sell it. Yo, $10,000, yo. I'm about to sell it. As for Jake Paul, well, in between the frantic editing, his $5,000 investment returned the following. Adidas Yeezys, AirPods, an iPhone XS, and whatever this was. Adidas NMD human race super let's go guys! Well, at least he's speaking in a language his viewers will understand. Now, I'm going to deduct the brownie points that I have previously awarded because Jake Paul has a very backhanded way of advertising this website. I kind of want to see what you guys as fans, like, it, I want you guys to go to mysterybrand.net right now and play this it, game it was this and one here. tell me and tweet me or something if you guys win this, okay? Because like, I want someone to win something amazing. Guys, you just need to go there and give it a spin. Tell him what you think. He's really interested to find out what you won on the website. Both of these creators oh, glorify gambling as a fun little game. After all, he just, dude, it's funny. It's, you gotta watch. By the way, when it's gonna be limp as fuck. No, dude. it's funny. It's Obama actually funny. Obama went on TV to announce that they'd killed Bin Laden. He spoke for nine and it's a half funny. minutes. It's funny. Trust Trump me. yesterday did 48 minutes on this. And for further it's comparison, we it's thought good. it might I, be fun I'm, to match up Trump's speech about Al Baghdadi with it's, it's Obama's about Bin Laden, it's and we were right. It was. The United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is dead. The United States launched a targeted operation against that compound. They did a lot of shooting and they did a lot of blasting, even not going through the front door. You know, you think you go through the door. If you're a normal person, you say, knock, knock, may I come in? After a firefight, they killed Osama bin Laden and took custody of his body. He died like a dog. But his death does not mark the end of our effort. A beautiful dog. A powerful dog. We give thanks for the men who carried out this operation. And I don't get any credit for this, but that's okay. I never do. But here we are. May God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. And I'm writing a book. <laughs> and I wrote 12 books. All did very well. Oh, I just me? What I tell you? What I tell you? That was good. Come you're on. so you're too much of a lib, dude, dude. That one, that was a good one. Come on, give it up. That was all a good right. one. That was all right. Well, they experienced staffing and also good fortune when opening their boxes, winning items that few would take. All it does is remind me I miss him so much. I miss him every day. I miss him like you miss Obama. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get ready for the fucking Uber to cancel right as it's coming here and then another uber that you have to wait for for like 45 well, minutes well let me check to see where it's at that's gonna happen you have to call like luxury or black or whatever if you want immediate service for granted you guys can see my balance right here i started no, with like half of this man. i just have opening stuff got some cool stuff and i like, sold back so i made back some of the money i'm up right now though so like i've been having good luck on this site the problem is that if everyone had the luck of these creators then the company wouldn't be turning a profit rice gum is quite explicit that he is actually making money on this website as if it's a business model catered towards mutual income additionally it seemed that some of these mystery items seemed a bit too good to be true to be an actual reward in the first place we already spoke about the disappearance and Gucci bag, but luxury cars, and even a mansion listed on the website Zillow. Yes, Cutie's still coming on. Wait, Cutie's coming? Not here, but on. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna look at stuff together. All featured Houses? as prospective prizes for the wide-eyed oh, patron. So Further to this came plenty of other people Dude, sharing their awful experiences with the company. Like Many of whom no, had one she's item. She's gonna be. She like is designing my house right now. Wait, what? Yeah, Cutie Cinderella is designing. Uh, she used to be a interior designer, oh as you know. God, I, I need her to help design one of my houses. I mean, one. What do you mean, one of my dude? Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Items that had not been delivered or even shipped. Definitely not spending more than a hundred dollars Canadian on a scam website. Or honestly, I feel like this is the biggest scam of a site. Like, it seems like the site and their mystery boxes are rigged. And not to be outdone by third-party testimony, there was an admission in their own terms of service stating that items one may not be delivered. All while the American hustlers over here were shilling out a tacky tombola to their fans. Come on, please, something nice, something nice. Oh. 
As always, the commentary bloodhounds could smell the bullshit from a mile away. And not long after, uploaded videos calling out our fortunate friends Dude, I, I on their reckless go, promotion of a dubious one. website, which would not be suitable for their viewers regardless of its reliability. So let's start with Jake. He responded, I posted my video on Twitter. And Jake responded very eloquently here. He said, lol, love this vid, Art. I responded to him, I said, you love being called out for selling a gambling scam to underage kids, okay? Because I just wanted to be like, you know what you're talking about. You know what you're saying, right? And he said, yes, love it. Rice Gun would go on to trade blows with H3 over the nature of the scam. They were shit responses. So much. For the record, what? Here, uh, turn off, uh Put down the windows. No, no, it's, I'm, I'll be here like. No, no, it's fine. I, I, I put down the windows anyway. Usually at this point. Do you have that thing for the pussy portrait? What? The pussy portrait. You know, you shared it with me, shirtless with the pussy. Oh, it's uh, back there. On the desk. Dude, he doesn't care because his fans don't care. They still love him, and they love him because he's famous. And before he falls off, they will continue to love him, right? That's just how it works. It's a never ending cycle because like all of the fucking psychotic shit that you do gets you a larger fan base. And when you have more of a fan base, then people literally just do not uh, stray away. They will let you do whatever you want. This big surprise. The other day I posted a video where I was promoting this website. Basically my management just came to me. I was like, yo, Rice, here's this deal. Load the app or whatever, you get paid, right? I love how he describes it as just, yo, my management hooked me up. I didn't think about anything. I don't consider anything. I have no interest in saying much more about it because I'm on a time limit and I don't think it's necessary. Rice Gum and Jake Paul ripping off people isn't new. That's the point. However, this isn't just about them. I'm so, I didn't mean, I didn't want to do that. Ah. The reformed boy of vlogging, Mr. Logan Paul. By 2020, it would be safe to say that the whole excursion into the unspecified foliage was a distant memory. I say that at least as I had to look up when it even happened. But needless to say, the past is the past. Let's talk about some presents. Now, I've loved Pokemon my whole life. Literally played the games all throughout high school, made a couple of viral Pokemon videos, owned Pokemon art, and I only have one tattoo on my body. It's a Pokemon named Squirtle next to my penis. So I knew there was a lane here that I did indeed have a passion for. Like a lot of people, Logan Paul has an interest in collecting. Pokemon, especially the valuable types. Given that he has the money to spend, he's made deals before and will probably make deals again. He is widely credited with causing a spike in the popularity of Pokemon collecting, given his public outspoken promotion of the hobby, though he hasn't done it alone. So the first thing I did was find an expert. Crazy, bro. I feel like I'm delivering me drugs. This feels like I'm trafficking a kilo, but like the price is actually probably more than a That's kilo what I'm saying. by weight. Look at this, look at this. Meet Jake, a collectible guru, also known as Collectibles Guru on Instagram. He was nice enough to sell me seven of these little pieces of cardboard for $50,000. This is the Collectibles Guru, who has appeared in Logan Paul videos and has sold products to Logan Paul that he has opened on stream, including a box containing over $200,000 worth of Pokemon content. Logan has promoted this guy as a reliable seller and curator of Pokemon cards, given his apparent expertise on the matter. Jake, Jake, Collectible Guru, H how much How much could I sell these three for right now? Five, five six K total? Between 4,200, 4,500. We got, we got an expert in the house. Fantastic. However, although Logan only had his praises to sing for this chat, his credibility came into question after another channel, fittingly named Dumb Money Live, paid just shy of 400. Wait, what the fuck? Doesn't that look like the content house? Uh, wait, like for 100 Thieves? Yeah. The back. Go back? Guru. Backyard much, of the content house? How much could house? I sell these three for uh, right, right now? 5, 5, 6K? Total? No. Different house. Hold on. Between 4,200, 4,500. We got, we got an expert in the house. Fantastic. However, although Logan only had his praises to sing for this chat, his credibility came this. in. No, different house. Different house. Completely. We don't have those plants back there. Oh. And that's real grass. After another we channel, sure. fittingly named Dumb Money Live, paid just shy of 400 grand for a set of first edition cards. Yet, this isn't exactly what they received. That one's that's not a first edition pack. <gasps> that's Wait, an what? issue. This is an unlimited pack. Oh, no. 
What do you mean? We have yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, thieves. No, that's oh. a major fucking issue. It's, it's, it's a oh my God. God. No, in fact, what they had was a random collection of resealed yeah, cards. Not. Hard a satisfactory thieves. product given the expenditure. And although the collectibles guru wasn't the collector of the items sold, he had facilitated the trade and was assumed to be in a position of relative information with respect to the exchange of goods, especially given how he presented the product. However, after this incident, questions were raised over his interest in the participation within this community. To put it bluntly, money seemed to serve as the prime motivation for this man. He hey, mate! Your appearance in Logan's opening of the box yesterday was a fucking joke. Your valuables were so over Bulbasaur being boy 30k. Even with the error is total shot and you fucking know it. You're a scammer. You don't care for Pokemon as a whole, but go back to your fucking cryptocurrency, you scamming twat. I have no idea. I have an idea. Blow me, question mark. And when you're finished, I'll tip you a 10k rack. You good? Happy if your sister would prefer coming back over. God damn. He clearly didn't know half of what he was talking about, and yet Logan here was billing him as the go-to expert for all I don't know, I just assume, I, he, didn't he, he had like a bit of a Persian accent? Pokemon needs, and it wasn't long at all until someone else paid the price for this charlatan's rogue trading. Now, you can't directly hold Logan Paul accountable for hiring a bad egg, <laughs> head. However, his promotion of this person as an authority on Pokemon cards to a mostly unsuspecting and impressionable audience does raise questions about Logan's own interest, especially when he hasn't clarified since that this guy is actually clearly not the most trustworthy though i have to say in this case it's hard to prove much as to logan's knowledge and although it's nowhere near the extent of well this give me more baby what's in the box it's a little tutorial about the failure to cherish the trust your audience bestows onto you and maybe just a little it's like by the way the reason why i advocate for government regulation with respect to like gambling regulation with respect to fucking cryptocurrency scams is the exact same reason why I believe we need to regulate the fucking vaccines and the vaccine mandate is good. Because there are a lot of dumbasses out there and they get fucking duped. And I don't want poor people and dumb people to get fucked over by other dumbasses that are just like marginally a little bit smarter than them, smart enough to fuck them over, okay? So it's the same principle behind that as well. And of course, the exact same, the exact same kind of fucking idiot will literally turn around and, and be like, ah, well, let me get fucked over if I want to, dude. I'm going to make so much money, you fucking idiot. You just don't know, dude, dumbass communist. You fucking dumb commie. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It's like, no, dude, I promise, okay? Just, you know, if you're too stupid to hurt yourself, that you can't stop yourself from hurting yourself, then someone else has got to do it, okay? It's just how it is. That's communism. Communism is when I stop you from hurting yourself, you dumb fuck foreshadowing of what is to come back to you in the basement john thanks babe be sure and sub to the right opinion if you haven't already though at this point i'm sure you're more than aware of his homoerotic escapades in case you needed any more convincing that the illustrious paul brothers didn't care a ton for their self-admitted child audience who is your audience who do you make your videos for yeah my audience is uh is definitely younger. It's like eight years old to like 16 years old. And so that's where I try to like cater the, the content mm -hmm. towards. Now you know how obvious the two are when it comes to taking candy from their baby fans. With the most recent and pathetic example. Fuck it, that's, that's a juicer right there, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? What? Uh, Uber being in the- I fucking told you, bitch! What did I tell you? No, I didn't, it's two minutes away. Oh, wow, you did this to- Oh, you fucking! I can't wait! I can't wait for that one to cancel. Dude, it, 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 gave me like it, it, it popped up on the screen like "review your last ride," and I thought it was canceled. Oh my god! During summer of 2021, Logan Paul and his circle of nameless henchmen suddenly began rallying behind a brand new cryptocurrency by the name of Dink Doink. The whole barrage of videos came as a shock, considering uh, nobody had ever heard the name Dink Doink uttered until people like Logan started plugging the hell out of it on Twitter, Telegram and his own podcast in front of an audience of 3 million people. Dink Doink is cleared to be the hottest fucking coin ever. Dude, oh, I just want to so say stupid. keep up the good work. And if you guys do every- Bro, I went to a party and girls were just trying to fuck them. What? Yeah. Why? I mean- No, literally. No, I, I thought the same thing and I'm like, dude, honestly, it's just clout. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It literally, like- I'm sorry, boys. 
Like it's just straight up cloud, dude. Straight up. Straight the fuck up. Los Angeles girls, I'm sorry. But some of these girls out here, dude, especially ones that you like love on Instagram and shit, like that you follow Yo, on Instagram. Your bro is showing. You gotta pull it back a little bit. Sorry, they they wanted to fuck him for his uh, excellent personality. <laughs> the irony is like the one person, the one person that like literally gave him the clout, other than Logan Paul, was probably the best relationship he could have ever uh, been in. And going forward, it's all material. We know the type we saw who gets the Mary Harry. It's true. Everything that you're doing right now, even more exponentially, we could go to the top of this whole fucking market, dude. Fuck yeah. Well, that's awesome to hear, Mike McJack me off. Sounds like an awesome crypto project to get behind. I mean, if you guys really... Then just date men if that's all women care about. Man, shut the fuck up, dumbass. I'm not saying that's all women care about. I'm saying with respect to him, just shut up. Just shut the fuck up, you dumb radlib idiot, okay? Shut the fuck up. I just, that's enough lib for today. Shut right. the fuck up, you dumbass radical liberal. <laughs> then date men, dude. Just date men then. You said all women care about is clout. That's not what I said. I literally specified like all the Los Angeles girls that are trying to fuck this dude. That's why I did it. At the party. We're in it for 100,000% clout. All right, I'm going to head out. All right, on that note, peace, Austin. Peace, guys. Uh, can I shout out my Twitter? Yeah, you want to shout out your channel? And my Instagram. Go ahead, shout out your channel. Instagram at Austin on Twitch. Twitter at Austin on fuck. At Austin on Twitter, I, uh, yeah, that's I need to change. So my you, you you change your Instagram to Austin on Twitch. Yeah, I I couldn't think of anything in the moment. So not on Austin on IG. No, it's Austin on Twitch for some reason. Okay, got it. Austin on Twitter for Twitter. vote to keep not to kick. <laughs> All right. All right, peace. Right, see you guys later, dude. I'll if you don't you. leave right now, they're gonna fucking leave you. I'm telling you. They're gonna what? Uber will leave your ass out no, here, bro. They're outside. All right, all right. Get the fuck out of uh, here, then. I'll see you guys for the next presidential debate. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. He said he'll see you guys for the next presidential debate. Really believe in it, and you promise it's going to the moon. Dink doink is going to the fucking moon. You don't believe me? You don't have to. You can just be naive and dumb. It's all good. But y'all, the community, this Telegram community, we're not naive, we're not dumb, we're fucking family, and we're gonna go to the fucking moon! I only have one question. What, what is Dink Doink? What is it? Well, let's start with the fact that it is literally worthless in every sense of the word. There is no practical utilization of this coin whatsoever at the time of me recording this. And when we look back at their website, which has been updated numerous times since I began writing this video, we can see there is still isn't much. Other than a vague project roadmap chock full of random buzzwords and crypto jargon, it looks like there aren't any real life- Logan and Mike harass Valkyrie and she fucking rolled them both? My queen. What the fuck? Wait, what did they do to her? Kind of fucked. goals for implementing this coin into society besides a few short videos, NFTs, a merch drop, more scheduled deals with creators, and an entire dink doink movie slated for 2022. Which if that ever happens, we may just have to review together. The biggest consistency you may have noticed by now is this little asshole. The dink doink mascot, which they have you believe is the real creator of the coin. That's how they worded everything, they didn't want you knowing who was behind a project like this as stated by idubs logan paul thinks you're a fucking moron and the guy behind this whole thing he also thinks you're a fucking moron the whole theme of this crypto is plausible deniability give us their names and their faces tell us if it's legitimate you should give us their names and their faces if they He dead fucked up his relationship with Lana for FaZe Banks. FaZe Banks is the only one I like. Let me say something. 
<laughs> Idubs has a death note. That's an unfair description. Mike asked Courage of Valkyrie would be interested in Logan on a video. Logan didn't even know and was mad at Mike for it. Valkyrie said she wouldn't date Logan on Twitter and made fun of him. His manager tried to hook her up with Logan and she responded on a tweet clip with no, 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 nope, nope, never. Who's Lana? Lana this dick. Oh, no, it's Lana Rhodes, famous porn star who hasn't shot a porno in a long time. Um, I'm pretty sure Mike broke up with his girlfriend to go lo live with Keemstar and Banks. Good for him, dude. He's on the, he's on the up and up. <laughs> Tiny Baby Giant says, you have a great evening ahead of you, chatter. <laughs> I don't know why I find that really funny. A, a funny thing to say. They clowned him for wanting to live in a frat house. Broke up with Lana Rose, go live with fucking Aiden Ross. I mean, he hasn't shot in a video in a while. Believe me, I checked. Oh, me too, dude. I'm looking for that new Lana Rhodes shit. It does not exist. What do you like about FaZe Banks? FaZe Banks is the everyman, dude. He's the average Joe. He's the Sam Adams, okay? He's the Adams to my Samuel. FaZe Banks is just fucking the most average Ohio man, despite the fact that he's not from Ohio. Uh, he's actually, I found out, from New England. Yeah, he, he's just like, I can't tell if you're being suspicious. The most average multimillionaire? No, dude, like. I was just very shocked to find out, but he, he's like such a Midwestern guy. He gives such Midwestern vibes. You know? I don't know how else to describe it. He's from Lowell. But... He's the kid from outer Boston who only drink Bud Light. Yeah. So. Face Banks is a 13 year old's idea of a cool adult. Face Banks is an icon. For every dude from Ohio who hangs out at fucking gas stations. Okay. Because he's the one that made it. He's the guy that used to hang out at the fucking gas station. And then because he was like in on this whole thing ahead of time of like, you know, doing Call of Duty compilations. Okay. He was the gas station guy who made it. And he kept it up. Like, he just keeps the same vibes, dude. Face Bang's is a warrior of the proletariat. He really is. He really is. You sound like one of those chicks from LA right now that you were talking about earlier. Dude, everyone I fucking shat on in this video are significantly more clouded up than FaZe Banks. What the fuck are you talking about? Like if I was doing it for fucking clout, why would I why would I single him out while shitting on Logan Paul and Jake Paul and Rice Scum and numerous other fucking people? Like just please think. Like exercise critical thought for a brief moment. I love this because everyone always was NBA defensive player of the year. No, maybe I'm just like personally fucking fascinated with this dude. He has much clout. No, the fuck he doesn't. The people that I'm shitting on have significantly more clout. Um, LMAO, I'm joking. Yeah, you're joking. But every single fucking weirdo parasocial fan of other streamers that come in here to hate watch immediately jumped up to be like, <laughs> actually, uh, he's right. 
they really had something to offer and felt passionate about the token, they should have no problem being as transparent as possible about who created it and who runs the token. But instead, it's all propped up by brainless dirt sacks and an animation style that bears an eerie resemblance to South Park. You know, a show that has absolutely nothing to do with the project at hand. Tell me about the flamethrowers and the underground tunnels! Well, the flame... I don't yeah, he does. He is. He does a podcast with Keemstar. He's, he's the worst person on the planet. So I that that sucks. But also, that's still that's still uh, you know it, he, it plays into his personality, and it plays into uh, he's he's too thoughtful. You know what I mean? He's too forgiving of a guy. He's he's that good. <laughs> we didn't put, we didn't put a lot of time into the flamethrower. <laughs> this was an off the cuff thing, and um, so we have, I have sort, sort of like. It's sort of a sort of a hobby company called the boring company But if you're trying to market such a pointless stupid coin It makes sense to tie it back to something the buyer the audience recognizes and in this case It's V. Lana is pregnant. Are you the father? I wish a terrible animations ripping off a show and in the most cringe on funny way possible I should add ding dong Be free Be the meme coin you were born to be. I personally hope to God these guys catch wind of it and sue the fuck out of Tree Boy over here. But see, if they call it funny and acknowledge how stupid it is, there's really no way any of this dink doink stuff can be bad, right? Well, that might be true if they weren't also making it out to be this grandiose investment worthy of your hard earned cash by posturing dink doink as the next doge, essentially. I believe in this shit. I think it's gonna go crazy. Some of my friends. And uh, celebrities as well are gonna get involved in episodes doing voiceovers, fun cartoon stuff. It's fucking dink doink, bro. And I'm ready to start sucking some dink. I'll see y'all soon. So far, it seems everyone who's promoted this project, all of Logan's friends, I should add, have done so in a way that, yes, underlines the stupidity of such a venture, but still tries to give it legitimacy in the same breath. A pretty irresponsible plug, especially when you fail to even entertain the criticisms leveled against you. For example, YouTuber CoffeeZilla, who will be coming back up in a second, has since pointed towards an interview with the alleged Dink Doink CEO, where he seemingly let the mask slip in his attempt him to explain the birth of the coin. We might as well, you know, be be honest about how this came about. I was chilling with Logan and and we were like, what's the stupidest name we could think of for mm -hmm. like a coin, right? Mm -hmm. What's the weirdest name we could think of for like a little mascot that's like a dumb spray? We were like, Dink Doink. Oh my god, his name's Dink Doink. <laughs> and it just came alive. Like Logan <laughs> designed the character on his phone on Snapchat. And we thought, we didn't realize what it was at first. We were like, it's a coin called Dink Doink. And they were like, nope, that's stupid. You know, like, there, there shouldn't be a meme coin called Dink Doink. And a week later, we just kept bringing it up. We're like, Dink Doink? This came as quite the shock to general audiences who had previously been sold the notion that Logan and his friends merely came across the token on a whim and decided to go all in because they believed in it. That much wouldn't be as concerning as Logan. We live in a horrible timeline. We really do. We really fucking do, dude. It, it's just like, and the worst part about it is it's going to get worse. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to get worse. I'm letting you know. intentionally misleading his audience into thinking he had nothing to do with the creation of the coin. It turns out the self-admitted creator and CEO of Dink Doink, who goes by the alias DD69CEO on <gasps> Telegram, is actually a man by the name of Jake Broido, an individual with close ties to Logan Paul. And according to a podcast he did in Logan's living room on 420, exactly 69 days before the promotion, you not only hear this guy blowing smoke of Logan's ass for an hour, but you get to see his perspective on starting his own crypto project at some point. I want to I want to make a coin called Bible coin yeah. and Christ coin. Coins by the way are only legal if they have utility. The difference between like the SEC will shut you down if your coin looks and feels like a stock. That's illegal. That means it's a security. Uh, crypto coins are supposed to have utility. They're supposed to use them. That's what makes it legal. Um so if I can like get God to sign off on some like, you know, present your Bible coins and get into heaven, what if I can't prove 
the utility, but I can say, like, in theory, with 100,000 of these coins, you can get into heaven. So I'd say that's a little telling. I'm not saying Logan or anyone in particular has... The only thing I respect about Logan Paul is this, because this is tangible. He worked for this. He actually put a lot of fucking blood, sweat, and tears into this. This is the only fucking thing that I respect about him. Okay? All of this. Sold. But holding on to a scam coin doesn't make it any less of a... <laughs> Dummies in the chat. Couch potatoes. Couch potatoes in the chat saying steroids. No shit. No shit, dumbass. Who cares? Do you know how fucking hard it is still, even with steroids? Like, I, I, I love when people just say, ah, not steroids. Like, Mr. Copium, dude. You know how fucking hard that shit is, even with the steroids? Scam. Just like framing it as a joke doesn't make it any less of a scam either. At the end of the day, all I can advise is to take what influencers say with a grain of salt. If you like. I've told you guys this before, like, if I didn't have such a fucking addictive personality and was terrified of becoming a ninja turtle, I would do steroids 1000%. Like gambling and you want to risk losing your entire life savings on a coin called ass? I guess I can't stop you. But the problem is the way these things are marketed leads naive investors into making brash decisions with their money, thinking they could potentially get in early enough to turn a profit, all because someone they look up to said so. Logan has been extremely cryptic regarding his affiliation with the token, and that alone should worry you. These people are putting their reputations on the line for the aim of ripping money out of your hands. But trust me, we haven't even touched the most egregious of them all. My name's Frazier. My name's Jarvis. I'm Tico. I'm Ricegar. I'm Nikon. And I support Save the Kids Token. Save the Kids Token. Save the Kids Token. I know. We're trying to save the kids, bro. Token. Save the kids token. Save the kids token. On Thursday, July 1st, 2021, the popular esports group FaZe Clan, known for delivering epic trick shots and gamer fuel, announced via Twitter the immediate punishment of four FaZe members, sending shockwaves throughout the internet. FaZe Jarvis, Nikan, and Tico were subsequently suspended, with FaZe K being permanently removed from the group. Now, FaZe being the center of drama is nothing new, only this decision came right off the heels of a video published by he goes back by the way yeah because he didn't fucking know poor guy he got fucked over by the rest of the phase clan a YouTuber named Coffeezilla, or a Coffee Break, a man dedicated to sniffing out digital scams, particularly within the crypto community. In late June of 2021, Coffee caught wind of a little coin by the name of Save the Kids, a charity token said to be donating a portion of its profits to uh, saving kids. Only instead of saving them, it was mostly scamming them. The coin was initially marketed by select members of Face Clan, Rice Gum, and Summer Ray for whatever reason, as a welfare token that vowed to redistribute 1% of each transaction to a child-oriented foundation. It was later discovered that a senior talent major within FaZe, Jordan Galen, had ended- Bro, it's like- I still can't get over how fucked this is, dude. <laughs> like, it's so uniquely fucked up. Independently recruited the aforementioned influencers to plug the project on their social media. Now, it's important to note that this was separate from FaZe. The higher-ups at the organization claimed they were not briefed on the creators Jordan had been reaching out to on his own terms. And we aren't talking about small followings here either. Each FaZe member has an audience of millions across several platforms, with Summer Rae and Rice Gum having more followers than any of them. These were giant influencers, peddling what eventually turned out to be one of the biggest scams ever reported by I love when someone says, chat, why are you all so horny? Motherfucker, we're on Twitch. What do you think is going on, dude? You think dudes who spend all their time on Twitch? You think dudes who spend all their fucking time on Twitch are not going to be horny at the fucking first sight of like an attractive woman? They can't control their urges. It's not a good thing. It's definitely bad. Control your fucking urges. That is horny because the streamer is. That's such copium, dude. I mean, that's such fucking cope. That's pure, unadulterated, 100% black tar copium, okay? Oh, yeah, you made us this way. Yeah, totally, dude. I'm the reason why you jerk off to, like, 11 tabs every night, you know?
by CoffeeZilla. Because, well, the coin's value plummeted a staggering 90% immediately following its launch. Ambassadors and early investors wasted no time in dumping their entire holdings, leaving anyone who bought in after the initial exclusive presale with a hole in their pocket and a ton of worthless crypto. Which is a massive, massive problem. Music bomb. So let me tell you, it was promoted by Rice Gum, all the usual suspects. There's this new crypto save the kids that's going to the moon. I'm holding it for life. And then they do this big promotion. And then the minute that everybody starts investing in this crypto, they sell all their shares. The first question anyone asked following the detriment of such a coin was how? How did any of this happen and who allowed for a charity coin to lose half its value shortly after being promoted by so many influential figures? Well, it didn't take long for people much- Hey, psycho. Notice how Lake McGroove gave you a 300 second timeout for you for saying like, cut your damn hair, it's painful to look at you. It's gonna be painful to chat at me too when I fucking ban you, dumbass. Dane is parasocial Andy. It's just like so fucking whack. Like, oh my God. Much smarter than I to start digging. CoffeeZilla teamed up with two other notable channels, some ordinary gamers and barely sociable to be exact, in an attempt to get to the bottom of such a catastrophe. As reported by Kotaku, audiences confidently pumped money into this scheme, believing their investment was protected by the high profile of those endorsing it, only to see their money disappear almost overnight. Welcome to the world of crypto, okay, where pump and dumps happen on an hourly basis. Countless naive It is kind of wild that Penny stocks are super like the penny stock pump and dumps that uh jordan belford engaged in were super illegal and he like literally went to jail for it but now he can totally turn around and do the exact same thing like literally the exact same fucking thing successfully but because it's crypto it's like a different uh uncontrollable financial uh tool it's not based technically within fiat currency you could just he just get away with doing the same thing that made him go to jail. traders being misled by their favorite creators meant someone needed to pay. And it wouldn't be long until the day of retribution was upon them. What went wrong and who was responsible for what? Embarking on a confusing and presumably frustrating scavenger hunt for the culprits, CoffeeZilla uncovered a key bit of information regarding the nature of the dumps, an anti-whale restriction that had been written into the very code of Save the Kids. In crypto, a whale is a single individual or entity that holds a large portion of a coin. So naturally, measures are typically put in place to ensure that one party cannot dump their entire load at once, crashing the coin value and letting the price drop to nothing. Well, in the case of Save the Kids, it seemed the original anti-whale mechanism had been changed from a 24-hour restriction. Did you see the popular YouTubers known as Playback reacting to your today? No, I don't know who the fuck that is. And I banned another chatter who like brought it up. I don't know who the fuck that is. I don't care. I don't know why you want me to fucking... Like, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and assume that it fucking sucks. Also, popular YouTuber. Motherfucker, he has 196,000 uh, subscribers. What the fuck? No, I know. I, I, I deleted one of the fucking, like, 15 months uh, subscribers that uh, linked me this video with 11,000 views. How's not to criticize millionaires from his $3 million mansion? Hypocrite. Like, why? What do you want me to do, man? You want me to give him some fucking uh, free clout? Dude, go ahead. Here you go, dude. Yeah, I do that. I also fucking advocate for Medicare for all despite being able to pay for fucking premium health care. Okay? I advocate for fucking college debt reduction. Or uh, college debt abolition, despite being able to pay my fucking college debt. And even paying my brother's college debt. I advocate to fucking lower my own property value of the fucking thing that I just bought. Because it's not an investment mechanism for me. 
especially when the alternative is just homeless people living on the fucking street. I know that these are concepts that are too fucking stupid for the average, like, YouTube Andy to fucking comprehend, or some of them nefariously don't care to comprehend it, but it's really frustrating to have to have this conversation over and over and over again. You do your own thing, I do mine. How about that? Motherfuckers be like, yo, I can't believe Hassan Abi is such a hypocrite from his $3 million mansion. He's like criticizing the rich. Please subscribe to my Patreon, by the way. I would like to also purchase a house one day. Also, I wouldn't be a hypocrite if I were to buy one because I suckle on the teat of the wealthy instead of shitting on them. Woo! Okay. Boot licking ass motherfuckers, dude. Are you happy? Restriction to a one day restriction, and then finally to one minute. Meaning whales, or big holders of Save the Kids, were allowed to dump large quantities of the token over the period of just a minute. The very code had been I don't think he made a video. K capitalism a problem like crypto, what? Manipulated in favor of the influencers. As more whales sold, the value dropped, leaving the poor fans holding the bag. The one aspect these scammers didn't take into account was that all transactions are verifiable on the blockchain. And if you have the wallets of several of these members, you can cross-reference them with the dates and times they bought into a coin, sold a coin, everything. Which is precisely what led these three men along their investigation. Using this wallet, we simply cross-check it at the time of giveaway, see that they got the winnings, and then check who sent it. We then check if that address has saved the kids' tokens and other tokens that these people have promoted in the past. And okay, we've seen all this. The we've seen tokens. Scam the Kids. Uh, scam Pepper. What's the conclusion? Let's run to the conclusion because I want to talk to Cutie Cinderella. Yeah, I mean, I, you got to imagine for people who have entire pers personalities built around mansions and supercars, right? You're really risking your peak, your 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 great career on 30,000, which is a lot of money, but it's certainly not enough to warrant putting that much risk on you, you know? More than anything, I think schemes like Save the Kids underline more glaring issues within the current crypto market. The minimal regulations surrounding such a concept is what really leads to so many people getting hurt. As we know, many of these casual investors were just fans of Faze and genuinely wanted to make a difference by investing investing in a charity token as noted by motherfuckers will watch me watch other dudes literally just milk their fan base okay they'll watch other dudes milk their fucking fan base and have me criticize that and then turn around and be like dude you're doing the exact same thing coffeezilla we tend to forget actual but also those guys that are milking their fan base dude they're fucking doing a thing that's not wrong faces and lives at stake behind the scenes of these rug pulls why do you want to buy because i want to help participate for charity help people with charity and earn some money as well because being on a charity coin and getting rich at the same time is just so satisfying they don't all go in for the same reasons they're not just numbers on a chart these were real people that this affected setting aside masterminds like sam pepper and fraser k there are regular people being screwed over the most simply for not knowing enough about what they're getting into and you really can't blame them for that cryptocurrency is complicated i barely understand anything past the basics myself and i can totally understand why viewers would be quick to buy into a token their favorite creator promised them was going to the moon these guys always have to state that they believe in the project but as idub said it's because it would be illegal for you to not believe in it make no mistake the most of the creators promoting these terrible what is this house porn people are talking about it's not real investments know exactly what they're doing they simply don't care enough about the fallout so long as they're able to make a profit in the meantime and until suitable regulation comes and the sec cracks down on these ghouls i'm afraid altcoins will just continue being the grift that keeps on grifting so what are you waiting for join the nickel family and revolutionize in the world of cryptocurrency keep on keep on I love uh, his th that song in the end. All right, uh, let's call Cutie Cinderella. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any 
future videos. <laughs>